Hi and welcome to Zen with VR. I'm Supriya, the co-founder of ZenFinder and the host for today. We're doing a series in collaboration with Virtuous Retail and today we'll be talking about emotional bridge and how to build habits that last. And for that, I have with me Dr. Nita Bhushan, who is the founder of the Global Bridge Institute. Nita is a cosmetic dentist who turned best-selling author, transformational speaker and a mental and emotional health advocate. Her first book, Emotional Grit, was a runaway success and since then she's also written a book of coaching and a business book of coaching. So welcome Nita. Hi Nita, thanks for joining us today. Uh, I'm a big fan of your story. Uh, the crit and resilience that you've demonstrated is amazing. And I think you're the perfect person to sort of help us out in this time of need where most of us are struggling with the crisis that we find ourselves in and we're not sure how to deal with the emotions that come with it. So any tips on how to manage our emotions in these trying times? Yes, thanks so much for having me. Um, so one of the things that I would probably give you as an insight in order to manage emotions, I mean, this is a, an unprecedented time that we are in. This is a uh, an extraordinary time in our world right now. And, you know, we've had to do something we have collectively never done, which is to be able to face our emotions head on. And it's a scary time for many people. Uh, lots of loss is happening around the world. Lots of, um, lots of grief, lots of emotions that are now bubbling up within us. And it can come out in, inside of our homes with the people that we love so much. And uh, what I wanna say to that is really to be able to first understand your emotions, we first have to be aware of them. We have to have the awareness that something is not feeling right. Usually we have all of these things that distract, that distract us from experiencing any emotion. And the biggest learning curve to being able to embrace emotions is to not judge our emotions, not say, oh wow, why did I get angry at this person? Why did I yell at them again? Oh, I do this again and I know I'm not supposed to do it, but I did it anyways. So first, have awareness and know that you're doing the best that you can, but at each moment you can start new, just like that. So even if you know you're going to start yelling at your child and they did something and you've been in the house with them for the last week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, um, there's going to already be a level of anxiety, stress, overwhelm, all of these stressful feelings. So the first thing you want to do is become aware of these emotions. Next, we want to be able to accept this current reality, this new reality. Uh, that this is uncertain. We have no idea what's going to happen and that we can embrace this fear. We can lean into it. But when we come from the opposite emotion of fear is love, when we come from a place of love instead of fear, there is a sense of acceptance. There is a sense of peace. There is a sense of calm. There is a sense of serene in that. Now. Uh, it's not always going to be the case, but at least we can have that intention. So going back to it, first be aware of, of what is coming up. You know, a lot of times when we distract our emotions, uh, we don't even know where in our body we're experiencing those feelings. And majority of us either have a headache, we have we feel tension in our heads, we start to clench our teeth and we start to have a lot of tension here in our face. Some of us tighten up our chest and we start to breathe really shallow. So our breath, our, our, our chest tends to like puff up. Um, some of us feel it in our gut where you start have like a loose motion or um, uneasy stomach because you're nervous, you're anxious, you're scared, uh, and we just, we, we ignore it. Or we tend to eat our emotions. We tend to stuff more food. So we, we, we ignore what we're actually, the pain that we're actually feeling or experiencing. Or we, we tend to do things. Uh, we need to move those emotions and we need to, to do movement. So 
where are you experiencing that tension? Are you getting a migraine headache? Are you, are you clenching up your jaw? So once you start no, noticing the physical ailments, you can begin to make changes right away. And then second, to be able to accept the reality that you're in, accept the emotion that you're experience, experiencing. Know that, that this is not you, but know that, um, that these feelings are valid, that these emotions are valid and they're telling you something. They're, they're like your guide. They're, they're your, um, it's like when you look at your gas tank and you're almost on empty, you're running out of gas. It's your emotional thermometer saying, okay, you've got to fill yourself up. You've got to go to the other room and calm down or shake your hands, shake your body, release some of that, you know, those emotions. You might need to step out of the room. If you're about to yell at somebody that you love or get into a fight or um, scream because you, you, you've had it, go and take a walk outside. That's really being able to calm yourself down. So these are self-regulators that we already have within us, right? To be able to come from a place that's calm, cool, and collective. Thanks, Nita. That was really helpful. Um, as you rightly said, these are extraordinary times, and I personally believe that they require extraordinary measures. But you know, not all of us may be equipped to deal with uh, you know what's being handed out to us at this point in time. So, do you have any uh, thoughts around how to build mental fitness? So in addition to some of the emotions that might be really heavy for us to process, uh, there is something that I teach that is in my book called Emotional Grit. And I actually have a freebie, which is completely free for all of you going through this right now, to build your mental fitness, to build your mental fitness. And I know we don't have as much time to go through all of them, which is why I created a free guide for you that will take you through about 10 different points that will help you build your mental fitness starting today. And some of it includes how to actually process some of the heavy emotions. Some of us need to move the emotions, right? Because emotions are just energy in motion. And if some of you are familiar with the term that I call for moss, for moss is a one way to build your emotional grit kit. It's one way to build that resilience toolkit because if we don't have our own tools to help with some of what life kind of uh, hits us with, uh, and, and some of this can be used with communication, this can be used to protect yourself uh, if you feel like you're getting into a situation or if you feel like your emotions are getting the best of you, uh, four moss is one way to do that. So the first is, um, is movement, right? So being able to move the energy, jump around, shake your hands, go to the bathroom. You can, you know, pat yourself. You can uh, do burpees, uh, push-ups, anything that's going to alleviate, which is why dancing is so, it, it changes your state right away, it changes your straight state. You go for a walk, it changes your state. It calms your nervous system down. We need to take care of our nervous system. So movement is one. Um, meditation is another. Meditation is the process of letting go. Meditation is the rewiring of your brain. Meditation, it gives you the keys to really unlock um, your own potential and to allow yourself to forgive. When we connect to our source of wisdom or connect to our source of any sort of meditation uh, for five minutes to quiet the mind, you're literally cleansing and doing some soul nourishing for your mind to let go of the grudges, to let go of the things that were holding you back. Um, and this basically trains you. This is your mental fitness training. Meditation allows you to do that. Uh, having a mantra, having a mantra, and it can be a word. It doesn't even have to be religious based. It could be one word. Uh, my word is serve love. Um, you know, in times of stress, I think of calm, strong, calm, strong. Uh, that's the mantra I had, you know, when I was uh, pregnant with my son, because I wanted to deliver naturally. Um, so you might have different mantras to get you through a specific time. Think of that one word or two words that means something to you. Uh, and then next we have movement, mantra, music. 
what kinds of playlists, what kinds of music gets you already in a positive state or changes your state. Maybe inside of your house, you have a code word with your loved ones. And, and I know with my husband and I, when things get really heated and one of us has to catch it, right? So both parties need to be involved in this. But with my husband and I, if we're gonna, if, if we know we're about to get into an argument because we don't agree on something or he has a different way of approaching things and I have a different way and we're not gonna budge, um, we say, okay, let's shelf this for now. Can we agree to that? And we both say yes, because this is something we've agreed to beforehand. Um, and our word is Hakuna Matata, because in Swahili, uh, for those of you who have watched Lion King, it means no worries. No worries, we'll talk about this later. And so that's our code word for meaning, all right, this is getting too intense, we're gonna shelf it right now, and we're gonna come back to it and talk about this a little bit later. So this is really important, especially if um, you wanna help develop your communication skills. And I know that in this partnership, I've been married before, but I know that the, in this partnership, I feel safe, secure, and my partner is also willing and understanding that we both need communication skills in order to help thwart um, uh, any emotions kind of getting out of control. So this is one way of doing that. You catch yourself or your partner catches you and you both honor that commitment. So that's a prearranged commitment. Um, and then we get into uh, we get into appreciation. So appreciation in terms of gratitude. Uh, what can I appreciate about this person right now? What can I appreciate about him even though, uh, or her, even though she's getting on my last nerves or oh, I've told her this many times, you know, you wanna, you wanna be able to maybe take that moment, take that moment and say, you know what, I need a few minutes. I'm gonna leave this situation right now. I'm gonna leave here and I am gonna lock myself in the bathroom and maybe write five things down. What I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for my breath, I'm grateful for just being alive in this moment, I'm grateful for myself, I'm grateful for my strength. So sound it off because that changes from thinking that, oh my gosh, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening again? Why is this happening again? What can this teach me? What can this teach me? And how am I so grateful because how is it helping me grow? And the last thing is senses. So for Moss, senses. Um, what about the the moments in your home maybe candles incense perfume oils um fuzzy or furry socks maybe a robe a piece of clothing something that makes you feel good something that makes you feel safe something that makes you feel uh, um, warm or loved. You know, I know in the winter, sometimes we have our blankets covering us. And I know for my son, he carries around his little blankie. He's in less than two years old. Uh, but that keeps him safe and that keeps him, uh, that makes him feel certain and that makes him feel loved. And when he has that, he's so playful and he's so, um, he's so intentional about what he wants to do. What is that for you when you are feeling Feeling out of alignment, when you are feeling super stressed or overwhelmed or anxious? Is there a, a sweatshirt that you can put on or maybe you can light a candle or maybe you can cook something that you smell the aroma of your mom's cooking from when you were 10 years old that changes your state? So hopefully with all of this, it gives you a nice little toolkit to help you really process some of those emotions that sometimes are stuck that we need to release and have a process for letting go. So thank you for sharing your insights today. I'm sure I was also found it very helpful. Thank you again for joining us and thank you to uh, the viewers as well. Please do follow uh, Zen with VR, the hashtag on uh, virtual details channels and follow us on Zenfinder for more such updates. Thank you and I will see you next time.